Bangladesh remains in a state of disarray a day after the resignation of the Prime Minister. Sheikh Hasina stepping down after weeks of violent protests against a 15-year rule. President Mohammad Shahabuddin has dissolved parliament, paving the way for the formation of an interim government. Protest organizers are pushing for Nobel Peace Prize laureate Mohammad Yunus to lead as chief advisor of the interim government. Ms. Yunus has reportedly accepted this proposal and is expected to return to Bangladesh after undergoing a minor medical procedure in Paris. Representatives of the student movement insist the government heed their requests ahead of their meeting with the army chief. A Bangladesh's key police association has declared an indefinite nationwide strike to push for the security of its forces. Around 450 police stations were targeted during the protests, with more than a dozen policemen reportedly killed. The group also offered its apology for the use of violence against students, arguing that officers were, quote, forced to open fire and were cast as villains. Authorities in Bangladesh say at least 109 people were killed in capital Dhaka on Monday, bringing the total death toll since protests erupted to more than 300. Demonstrations began last month demanding a scrapping of quotas for jobs in the civil service. Meanwhile, families of political prisoners are waiting for news about loved ones being released from jail. Ex-leader Halida Zia is one of the many detainees freed after years under house arrest. The 78-year-old chairperson of the Bangladesh Nationalist Party was a bitter rival of former PM Sheikh Hasina and was sentenced to 17 years in prison for graft back in 2018. And for more on these developments, we're joined by Salman Said in Dhaka and Niha Punia, who is standing by in New Delhi. First, let's bring in Salman. Uh, Salman, what's the mood on the ground? How are the many people on the ground coping with the aftermath of the protests and the resignation of the Prime Minister? It's almost have been, uh, been almost more than 24 hours that people are in the streets of Dhaka. I'm right now standing exactly in front of, uh, behind me is the uh, Prime Minister resident where there was a lot of vandalization last, uh, yesterday at this time of the hour. But now I can see a lot of cars in the streets. Everything is normal. But there's no belief, but uh, no traffic. But the students are actually uh, controlling the whole traffic system. They are uh, actually volunteering and trying to keep people and the car uh, separation and controlling, and controlling the traffic movement in the city. They have also been cleaning the cities in various parts where it was uh, fires and uh, cars were burned, all those places. All right, so, uh, Salman, uh, students uh, making some effort to restore peace, certainly in Dhaka. Oniha, let's bring you in now. India's parliament held an all-party meeting on the crisis in neighbour Bangladesh earlier today. What was discussed then? Well, this was the first time we saw confirmation coming in from New Delhi. Given the developments of the last 24 hours that Sheikh Hasina is, in fact, in New Delhi, we've seen reports so far, uh, but this was New Delhi confirming that she is here. But uh, Foreign Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar uh, says that he's not at liberty to discuss what happens next, even as we're hearing reports that she's trying to uh, seek political asylum in the UK. Uh, we saw first that uh, high-level meeting chaired by Prime Minister Modi on Monday night, where he was briefed by uh, Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar. We don't know yet if he's uh, spoken to uh, Sheikh Hasina or if there's been any contact between the two leaders, but we did see on Tuesday morning uh, a meeting of all political parties being called by Mr. Modi's government, where senior political leaders were briefed about the security situation, as well as what happened with Sheikh Hasina uh, fleeing to um, 
New Delhi, uh, you know, we, we saw questions by the opposition parties on whether or not uh, India is suspecting uh, any sort of political interference and role of, uh, you know, foreign countries in Sheikh Hasina's ouster. Uh, and Dr. S. J. Shankar said that uh, as far as India knows, it doesn't have any information on that uh, front yet. Uh, also telling political parties that uh, armed forces have been asked to be extremely vigilant along the shared border between India and Bangladesh. We also saw the foreign minister then briefing uh, both houses of parliament on Tuesday evening uh, where he said that India is deeply concerned by the crisis in Bangladesh but it's hoping that once law and order is restored there it'll be business as usual. Um, he said that the biggest uh, concern right now is the uh, you know treatment of minorities as we're hearing of rising attacks against uh, Hindus in the country uh, but also said at the same time that he's welcoming efforts by some groups to keep minority communities safe. Um, he's also confirmed that India is in touch with the uh, Bangladeshi army and is hoping to have contact with the next incoming government as well. Tells you how carefully New Delhi is navigating the changing geopolitical realities of the region now. Oh, thanks. Nia Ponia reporting from New Delhi and Salman Said in Dhaka.